who I didn't want to be turned me into who I am now because I learned how to recreate what was really going to work. Being good to people, being honest, mm. learning skill sets and mindsets that are going to help move a business forward. Because, um, dude, it's, I mean, you know this, it's so much easier for men in society to lie about where they're at and to use people mm -hmm. and to fake it than it is to actually create something of value. What's up everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Today we have Dave Hutchinson. And we are the Sales Wolves. Uh It's nice to have a guest that'll actually howl with us. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate yes. that. It makes me feel less honored. <laughs> <clears throat> we do have a special guest, so let me get right into that. This is episode 87. Thank you for being here with us. Absolutely. Thank you for being here with us. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to you through yes, the camera. Yes. <laughs> um, but tell everybody who you are, where you're from, um, kind of what your main focus is right now in life. Main focus. In 35 oh, cool. seconds. All right, ready? All right, Dave Hutchinson from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, man, Tyler and I collect, connected, what, two years ago at a yep. conference um, in the same industry, similar niche, um, not exact, but life insurance, financial services, that sort of thing. So um, I wouldn't say that's my main focus, try to focus on everything in balance, right? We talk about that a lot. So, um, you know, body, fitness, income, relationships, building up others. So I would say everything in balance is, yeah. is focus. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, very good. So the topic of this Sales Wolves podcast is going to be on <clears throat> this idea of the abundance versus lack mentality, mm -hmm. or I would just call it a you know broke mindset uh, versus an abundance uh, mindset. And uh, and Dave's going to kick it off with just a little bit of his personal story and kind of his journey um, through maybe a little bit of both and maybe ups and downs. A lot of ups and downs, man. I mean, you always hear. You know, all this stuff about people say, well, you only see the end result. They only see the nice cars. They only see the, the booming business. Mm -hmm. And there's always a backstory. And I think so many people are a little afraid to tell that because the place that they're in now, <clears throat> maybe uh, it feels like a place of power and abundance. Yeah. And they don't maybe like reliving that. But there's power in those stories, as you know, right? There's power in talking about what it actually takes to get there. Um, the struggles that create success because mm -hmm. success is not just a bunch of wins. It's, it's learning those hard lessons. Yeah. So for me personally, um, I came from a place of structure where I served in the military as a military police officer um, for six years, served a tour in Iraq, came back, and I made the decision to get out. I just had this feeling. I was like, I'm meant for more. I need to build something. I'm meant to lead people. I did very well in the military with leading, but um, there's always this this sense of confinement to where you know exactly where you're gonna be in life, you know yeah. exactly what's gonna happen. So that just wasn't for me anymore. It didn't serve me anymore. Um, I loved my sense of service to the country, but I made that decision, time to get out. So in doing that, there's always this, every veteran will tell you, when you get out, there's always this time period where you're like deathly afraid of life. Yeah, because you sure. go from structure and being told what to do, mm -hmm. you know exactly what you need to do to make a paycheck, to make ends meet, yep. and now all of a sudden, going from like veteran um, or service member to entrepreneur, if you really look at it, there's a lot of people that are just absolutely killing it mm -hmm. in the entrepreneur space that are <coughs> veterans. Why? Because those lessons in between getting out and creating success hmm. are hard. Hmm. Because you have to figure it all out on your own. Yeah. You didn't even work for a corporation where you learn skills and things that are like applicable to the marketplace. Like you literally strap on gear and you go and you fight, right? right? Or just, in my case, guard a lot of stuff or do security checkpoints. But those skills aren't applicable to like, hey, mm -hmm. let's build a sales force and let's lead people and let's create an income from nothing. So yeah. for me, um, before that success came was a lot of alcohol, sedation, I tried to make up for it by like going to the gym a lot and being like, oh, I'm in great shape, look at me, buying mm -hmm. sports cars, which mm -hmm. I still do that I like, but mm -hmm. it was all like just a facade yeah. to make up for the fact that I was going nowhere. Yeah. I mean, I remember literally I would drive like a Mustang Cobra and I would go to the gym and get all jacked up and then I'd go to the grocery store and forget that like I didn't deposit a check and my card would decline <laughs> to buy groceries. Like yeah. that's yeah. where I was. So that was a scarcity mindset, right? Like mm -hmm. that was, well, I have to show all this flash because I don't know what I'm doing. Sure. So 
then it got to a point where it was like I had to sell the car. I had to do all this stuff to make ends meet, mm-hmm. and I had to recreate myself. Um, so really, what it comes down to is like that scarcity mindset of like I have to spend, 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 and then save the rest, as opposed to actually investing in yourself yeah. and learning how to create a skill from nothing, and learning that like you're always going to make more money as long as you're turning yourself into someone that can produce that, mm-hmm. as opposed to posture and look the part when you're yeah. not really the part. So that's kind of my story. I mean, there's a whole there's a whole gob of ups and downs, sure. right? Not just the alcohol bit, but, you know, burning down relationships. Mm-hmm. Great girls would come into my life, and I would basically just, you know, lie, lie cheel, and steep. Like, lie, <laughs> lie, lie, lie <laughs> steal, and cheat. Yeah, yeah. um, my way through life to try and feel better about where I was at. I sure. mean, that's, that's the real blatant truth, is like learning who I didn't want to be turned me into who I am now, because I learned how to recreate what was really going to work. Being good to people, being honest, mm. learning skill sets and mindsets that are going to help move a business forward. Because, um, dude, it's, I mean, you know this, it's so much easier for men in society to lie about where they're at and to use people mm-hmm. and to fake it than it is to actually create something of value. So, absolutely. That's, yeah. There's one thing you said in there that I want to reiterate on because uh, I don't know that I've ever heard it said that way, but. It's very interesting to me. You, you, t- you said that the reason why a lot of entrepreneurs that are veterans do so well is because of the lessons that they learn in between service and success. Mm-hmm. And that's extremely interesting. Um, that's actually pretty deep. But it's extremely mm-hmm. interesting because the easy way to have said that is a lot of entrepreneurs that are veterans are successful because of what they learn in the military or their experiences in the military, or the leadership aspects in the military, right. and all the stuff that was while they were in service. But what you said is, no, it's actually the lessons that they learned about themselves right. after they got out of the service yep. and tried to re, um, what, do you, what do you call it? Reintegrate. Re- reintegrate mm-hmm. into, into civilian life. Yep. And then not only reintegrate, then do something completely different. Mm-hmm. And the lessons that they learned which are more personal skills yep. and the lessons really through failure mm-hmm. and trial and error and rumination that it took to basically try something completely new. Yeah. And that's a very interesting, that's very interesting. I never looked at it from that perspective. It was, it's definitely, it felt like a recreation of self. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying that the things I learned in the military didn't aid in some way, but sure. I would, I would, if I had to put a number on it, it'd be 80, 20, yeah. like 20% leadership skills and how to tough through hard situations. Mm-hmm. But that's, again, that's all a part of a system that you learned that you have to then forget, basically, Mm -hmm. because then it becomes this, like, okay, now I need to learn the basics of, like, sales and the basics of um, product knowledge and whatever industry you're in, Mm -hmm. and then building and then scaling and then protecting. And it's all these things that it can be very intimidating. So combined with that feeling of, like, aloneness, Mm -hmm. there is this feeling of, like, hey, I'm on my own now. it can either be it's or, that, either, or that people don't understand what I'm going through. That too, it's sink or swim. It really yeah. is, and and it's. I'll give props to Colin Wayne. I don't know if you know him. Follow mm-hmm. him. He runs uh, Redline Steel. It's a um, like home decor. Okay. I mean, dude, he's just blowing up. He yeah. used you know click funnels and Facebook ads, and he went from he scaled it from just a small little you know kind of trying it out, making little cool American flags to like. Hmm. He just bought this warehouse that they built out with these like massive laser cutting mach- machines, and it's like. Hmm. I think he's going to do like 20 million something wow. this year in, in steel decor. Yeah. And now he's got a candle company too. So again, army guy got yeah. out and just made a decision to recreate himself. Hmm. And it's been phenomenal to watch. So. It seems like one thing though that you do learn in the military, and, and I wasn't in the military, my dad was, and a lot of my family were, um, but having surrounded myself with a lot of, of prior military and, and active, that this idea of like preparation, training, but also the understanding that once you get into combat that something's gonna happen to where it's gonna throw that all completely completely off the table. That yeah. there's, there's a certain level of preparation that you'll always have to do, but that once you actually get into combat, 
that the, a lot of the stuff that you're gonna that you're gonna end up executing on is gonna be on the fly. Yep. And it's being it's having that ability to act in the face of uncertainty. Adapt and overcome. Um, yeah, adapt, adapt and overcome. And overcome. Yep. It's huge. And, and you always hear about the, are you familiar with Tom Shea? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Tom Shea, he's from Greenville. So he yeah. lives here in Greenville and, and we've done some stuff with him. And he's really? incredible. He's a legend. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. He's been on this this podcast. Really? Um, and Unbreakable, his book's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, but every single time that they went out, and I love how they call it theater. I just love anyone that yeah. downplays just massively chaotic, <laughs> dangerous. I mean, theater. Theater. I love that. Yep. Um, but every time they, every time they went out, they ran out of ammunition, food, and water. Every time. Mm-hmm. It's like there's only so much preparation you can do for running out of ammunition, food, and water, right. being in a hostile environment. Yeah. Um, but I love that. So I'm going to throw a different perspective on on the table here and and when I think of an abundance mentality versus lack mentality and, and the ways that I've seen it in my play out in my own life is this idea of radical generosity and that the times where I have benefited the most and been in the most ab- abundant of the most abundant mindset are the times where I have been the most generous yep I agree now, there's, a, there's an interesting struggle there in that, in that relationship that I'm not generous because of that. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's, it's kind of like a, the opposite of whatever the opposite of a catch-22 would be, <laughs> whatever that I, I'm whatever word for that is. Yeah. It's like, I don't give to receive, but I've always received and I've always when I'm given. given. Right. In the times where I've been less generous, I have... I have Mm -hmm. been blessed less. Yeah. And so it's, you don't give for the blessing, but it's an understanding Mm -hmm. that by giving, you will receive more. You you give without expectation, Mm -hmm. but you know somewhere in the back of your brain that the universe usually brings it full circle. You don't go into it with the intention of, I'm going to do this nice thing. I'm going to give $30 to this homeless guy so that hopefully I'll make some more sales tomorrow. That's not (laughs) why you do it. Yeah. But I've found... Similarly, that every time in my life that I've said, you know what, this person needs me, mm-hmm. and I give, um, within about a week's time frame, something comes back to me, and like a little voice goes off, and it's yeah. like, thank you. Mm. And it's, it's truly reciprocal. I, I believe that the universe is all about balance, and mm-hmm. it's, we can go into this whole other conversation, but... <laughs> well, I, I mean, and, and I do believe to that, to that end that the universe will never be indebted to you. Correct. I believe that uh, completely. Mm-hmm. And whether people want to take that a religious route or want to take it a spiritual route or whatever mm-hmm. th- that way, I take it the religious route. Um, but that God will never be indebted to you, mm-hmm. that you can't out give, give God. I just right. believe that. And I've seen it play out in my life over and over. I've tithed on unemployment. I've mm-hmm. tithed when my tithe check was bigger than what I made in years mm-hmm. prior. Right. And I've never been in a more abundant mentality and mindset than when I was giving the most. Right. Um, and there have actually been specific times where I found myself in a, in, in with a lack mentality that I found myself in a, in like a preservation mode yeah. where, Survival. I felt, where I felt like, um, and even when I was doing well, like this has been in the last couple of years, like I found myself in, in certain periods where I, I was holding on and saving up and mm-hmm. only felt comfortable when there's, when there's X number of zeros in a checking account. Yep. And Been there. When, when I wasn't giving, and in the second that I gave, like the second that it happened, the second that I hit submit mm-hmm. and gave, like it literally was just like flipped a switch, like instantly. Mm-hmm. Because the idea of I can give, especially when you talk about radical generosity, the, the idea that I can give and give big mm-hmm. is the understanding that I can give because there's more coming. Right. And that I can't outgive because there's always going to be more. There's always going to be more. And the lack mentality says I can't afford to give because I've only got so much and mm-hmm. I got to hold on to what I have because I don't know if anything's coming. Right. And when you flip that switch on whatever you want to call it, the universe or God or whatever, mm-hmm. when you flip that switch and start to believe truly that there is always going to be more coming, then it gives you the ability to give 
But I would say that it's because because you gave. Right. Uh, it's a it's a, again it's a there's an interesting kind of pull from opposite directions there. But it's important for people to know that that if you're not a generous person, then don't expect to receive much in life. Right. Like that's that's mm-hmm. like you know to whom much is given, much is required, and and all that yep. you know, better to give than to receive. All that stuff, all those cliches are bottled in this idea of just like mm-hmm. generous people win at the end of the day. Yep. Like like I've never met. A, a successful person that also had fulfillment mm-hmm. that wasn't extremely generous. Right. Like our organization, our company here, we give. If people real, if people actually knew the the dollar amounts that we gave, um, they would be astounded. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the individuals within our organization, if they knew. But that's why we're doing well. Right. Like, like I truly believe that that's why we're doing well is because we are so generous uh, with what with what we've received. Right. Um, and, and I think that the, that's how you change the world is through radical generosity. Mm-hmm. Um, and, Absolutely. and through the mindset that that will create in people and through the ripple effect that it will create in the people that do business with us, right. um, whether it be clients or whether it be other agents or whether it be partnerships, that through that generosity, when people see your willingness to give and go above and beyond, yep. then, it, then it, it's contagious. They're like, Hmm. Interesting. He gives this much, but man, he is doing really, really well. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Maybe I should try right. that. And so the question I would have that we can talk about real quick is, is if you're, if someone's watching this, listening to this and they find themselves in a situation where they don't have much to give and whether that's because they are in a lack mentality or whether they have a lack mentality because they right. don't have much, whatever situation that got them, them to where, where they are now, mm-hmm. it's like, so, so where do you start? Like, how do you, how do you just cr- create this abundant mentality when you feel like you don't have anything to give? I would say every little bit counts hmm. because if you start small, like you were just talking about how you still catch yourself doing it. Mm-hmm. I do too. It was the grocery store the other day, and I was like, I went to grab, I think it was like a thing of rice, and next to it was, or no, it was dog food, the, the canned dog food. Mm-hmm. And I grabbed like two or three, and I was like, wait a second, there's a, the whole box there. I things like, well, must I don't be, really... Things must be pretty rough right. for, yeah. if you're yeah. going after the dog Absolutely. food. Absolutely. So... <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't for you. Gotcha. Right, not for me. <laughs> but I caught myself. I was like, why would I grab three when I can grab like one or two cases? Yeah. Because I'm going to come back for them anyway, right? It was the, I don't really need it right now. Oh, it'll be cool. I'll put it off. But if I'm going to use it anyway, what's the difference between spending the $20 now Mm -hmm. as opposed to $3.99 on a couple? And I trained myself from way back when, when I was broke, that don't, don't think that you have to conserve everything. Don't think that, well, you have to ration. Like, that's a ration mindset. Yeah. It's yeah. like, well, I have to ration this out because i got to make it yeah. to the next payday. Yeah. So even when we have abundance with our careers and with our lives, we still kind of, as humans, revert back to that. I think it's a survival mechanism. Mm-hmm. We revert back to, like, oh, hunters safety. and gatherer yeah. safety. And it's just something we have to constantly work on. But when you take it to that next level, away from dog food, right, <laughs> and we go to charitable giving mm-hmm. and, you know, family lost their house in a fire and they need to go fund me. Are you going to give 200 sure. or are you going to give 1500? Yeah. Right. Like those are the decisions that we are, we have responsibility to make. Yeah. And I think that actually we did a GoFundMe for a gentleman that didn't have health insurance and he worked at the local gas station. Nicest guy you can think of. Always very like servant based. Like he mm-hmm. would check you out at the gas station and he would literally ask like, how are things between you and your brother? Mm-hmm. I haven't seen him in a while. Like, yeah. Like, just that kind of yeah, person, yeah. right? For sure. So whenever things went bad for him, we rallied the community, and I was so floored at seeing everybody give, like, even people that I knew that didn't have a lot of money, mm-hmm. give a five, eight hundred dollars. Yeah, and it was great because it it gave me faith again. I was like, mm-hmm. see, not everybody's in a scarcity mindset. Yeah, um, but it's true when when you don't have a lot to give, even if it's five to ten dollars, mm-hmm. you can make that five to ten dollars again. Yeah. So why feel like you have to hoard it? And that's, that's really what it is, is it's sharing, like you said, it's sharing, it's giving, because you know there's enough to go around. And I think that if more people joined together in that and did things like collaborated with people in, in industries, right, yeah. and thought, hey, how can we make this thing bigger to help more people? Because mm. at the end of the day, 
if I want to build an empire, it's not because I want to have six houses and 12 Lamborghinis. It's mm-hmm. because I want to help end Seven. sex trafficking, uh, right? <laughs> I want to help end yeah. poverty. Like, what would it look like if we all thought that way and we actually did something about it? Absolutely. So. You're exactly right. And I think that you can also give other things than money. That you can give time. Yeah, absolutely. And you can give um, actual... Emotion. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can give things. You can, you can give space. You can, there's, there's so many things that you can do mm-hmm. um, to, to help someone. Um, and I think that that's huge. But, but my challenge would be that if someone is currently looking at their life and, and thinking, man, I, I kind of do have a lack mindset. I kind of am in this preservation mode. I, mm-hmm. you know, I can't remember the last time I just gave out of just, just generosity, just, right. just gave, um, with no expectation of, of something in return. Uh, I would just challenge you to try it for 90 days, just like try to be a generous person for 90 days. If yes. you were, if you just looked at your life and said for the next 90 days, I'm going to seek out opportunities to be generous, mm-hmm. generous with my time, generous with, with money, generous with everything, wh- whatever that means to you, I can guarantee you that 90 yeah. days of generosity will probably change the way that you look at life for the rest of your life. It'll like change it, your it'll soul. Change, it'll change, it'll yeah. change absolutely everything if you were to try it for 90 days. It's interesting. I don't want to get in a ba- debate with anyone about church and tithing and things like that. <laughs> but I went to a church that did a 90-day tithe challenge. And they said if you tithe for 90 days and you feel like you just didn't feel like your relationship with God was, was any better at the end of that 90 days or that you weren't a different person for the better in 90 days, right. they'd give you all your money back. Hmm. They never had anybody give, get the, ask for their money back, right. ever. Because hmm. it's people being generous for the first time, probably in a long time, yeah. if not ever. Yeah. And they're, of course, by, by giving, you're going to feel better and th- good things are going to happen. It's just, I mean, you can call it the law of attraction. Um, it's just positive begets positive. Yep. Always, 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 always. And so that would be my challenge to you. And, and on top of that challenge, I would say, if you're someone that's hesitant and say, well, I, yeah, I don't need to do that. Well, I would say, how's things working out for you? Right. Like, you know, be if, 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 more if importantly, be if, honest about yeah, how they're working out. If you're the out. person that we're talking to right now, that's in that like and tell you, how the, how's that working out for you? Mm-hmm. Um, because I just don't know of a single successful person that is guarded right. with, with their money and their time. I would agree. Um, that it's always, always the generous that are the, mm-hmm. the most successful. Right. Um, any other last thoughts? I want to say something on, you said time, mm-hmm. with their time. I, I used to be like that. I used to, you know, I would keep certain time frame to clients and I would say, oh, I got, I'm busy. I got to do this. Like, we got to get this taken care of now. So what do you need? You know, yeah. rush them. And instead of being in the moment with a human being and connecting with them, be like, okay, what's the issue? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Taking my time with yeah. it. Um, I used to be very scarcity mindset with my time. And now I still respect my time, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it's in a way where when I give to someone, like if you and I were just talking and you were having an issue, mm-hmm. whatever, I give. Yeah. I'm gonna connect. I'm gonna make sure that we really get to the bottom of what it is that is paining you so that I can help. Mm-hmm. And I didn't used to be like that. I yeah. used to be so scarcity driven with my time because I, it was always, oh, I have, to, I have to make more money, I gotta mm-hmm. go do this, I don't have time for you, right? Yeah. And I found that the more that I give my time, the more that things are reciprocated to me in other fashions as well. Yeah. So it's interesting. It is. And so I guess, you know, coming out of this podcast, this is a little bit of a different um, podcast, um, talking more on what's going on between, between your ears. Mm-hmm. Um, but an extremely important uh, Sales Wolves podcast at that because I think this idea of radical generosity is what can change the world. Yep. And that sounds silly, but it's really not. It's yeah. actually quite practical um, if put into use. I and, agree. and so I would just challenge again, look at your world through this lens of radical generosity and just see what happens. And I would love for people to send us a message, a comment um, on different ways that you're being radically generous, um, either already or moving forward. And just let us know, like, like what has happened? Hey, over, over this past 30 days, I, I made it a point to, uh, every time I went to a restaurant, you know, I normally tip, you know, 10, 15, 20%. Mm-hmm. I tipped 40%. Like right. I, I started giving out some $20 bills on some, on some, you know, $18 <laughs> meals. Yeah. Um, and just what, what those, 
conversations with those waitress and waiters mm-hmm. and, and what that led to and then just th- what that mentality did for your overall happiness yeah. uh, and what that's translated into your with your business or your relationships with your spouse mm-hmm. or your relationships with your kids and and I just know for a fact that the conversations that we're going to have are only going to be positive. No mm-hmm. one's going to send me a message and say, hey, I tried that whole generosity thing. And, uh, <laughs> Hated it. And I gave, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and lost my house. <laughs> like, like, no, no, right. no one's going to say right. that. So. So guys, with that, this is episode 87 of the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Dave Hutchinson. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow.